Today is World Mental Health Day. It's a day dedicated to raising awareness of mental health issues and finding ways to support them. Every year, the World Health Organization gives World Mental Health Day a specific focus. And this year, that focus is increased investment in mental health. That's something that the World Health Organization says is especially needed right now. COVID-19 has impacted the mental health of millions of people in terms of an, the anxiety and fear it has caused and disruption to mental health services. Mental health was already a neglected health issue globally. Close to one billion people are living with a mental disorder. Three million people die every year from the harmful use of alcohol. And one person dies every 40 seconds by suicide. For this year's World Mental Health Day, WHO together with our partner organizations is calling for a massive scale up in investments in mental health. Numbers show that investment could really help. A September study from the University of Chicago found that 56% of Americans ages 18 through 34 felt isolated sometime that past month. 25% of them rated their mental health as fair or poor. In June, the CDC found that 40% of people who completed the survey had experienced a mental or behavioral health condition related to the pandemic. And last month, we talked to a local doctor who said she's seen more anxiety and depression in kids who have never struggled with those conditions before. She says the isolation that comes with staying at home can lead to other health problems. The stress and anxiety can take a toll not only on, on mental health, but also on physical health. Many kids manifest their, their anxiety and their depression symptoms in a physical way. Another doctor we talked to over the summer said encouraging kids to talk about their feelings is an important step. Kids need to talk about bad feelings as much as they talk about good feelings. Worry helps us figure out how to problem solve, how to make small steps to make ourselves feel better so that we feel more secure. Just this past week, a survey from the World Health Organization found that COVID-19 has disrupted mental health services in 93% of countries around the world. That includes counseling and psychotherapy, emergency interventions, access to medications for substance use disorders, and services helping vulnerable people. The WHO says this highlights the need for more money for mental health. And that's what's driving their event today, called the Big Event for Mental Health. World leaders, mental health experts, and even some celebrity guests will be talking about how we can improve mental health and make sure support is available to anyone who needs it. It'll be live streamed on the World Health Organization's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, and LinkedIn. It starts at 10 o'clock this morning, and anyone can join in for free. Now, we also want to remind you about some local resources available to you at any time you need. Indiana launched its Be Well helpline over the summer. So if you live in Indiana, you can call 211 at any time to talk to a crisis counselor. Sometimes you need somebody that is um, kind of unattached, unconnected to you, or maybe you wake up in the middle of the night and it's 3 a.m. and you don't want to wake up your family, um, but you've got things on your mind, you can't fall back asleep, um, just reach out and call. For people who live in Kentucky, the National Alliance on Mental Illness in Louisville has a 24-hour crisis line. That number is 502-589-4313. We've all probably heard about a case of COVID-19 where someone tested negative but was actually positive and vice versa. A lot of times the accuracy of your COVID test comes down to the type of test you take. So this morning we want to go through the three most common types of COVID-19 tests and find out their level of accuracy according to the FDA. So first we have the molecular test or the PCR test. Now this is a nasal or throat swab. It's usually sent to a lab. And the FDA says this test is highly accurate, and once you take it, you don't usually need to take it again. Next, we have the antigen test, or the rapid test. Now, this is also a nasal or throat swab and can get results in an hour or less. The FDA says these tests are usually highly accurate as well, but if you get a negative test, you might need to confirm that with a molecular test. And then we have the antibody test. This will give you results in one to three days, but the FDA says sometimes a second antibody test is needed for accurate results. 
And one important note here, this test will show whether someone has been infected with COVID-19 in the past, but it will not show an active infection of COVID-19. Kentucky data actually gives us a breakdown of these tests. Now, as of Friday, there have been just under 1,763,000 PCR tests in Kentucky, more than 42,000 antigen tests, and about 82,000 antibody tests. Earlier this month, Kentucky actually changed the way they report the positivity rate to how most states report it using just PCR tests since those are the most accurate. So why do some tests come out inaccurate? Well, there are a lot of factors like the type and quality of the sample, how it was handled, or just plain human error. 